Hello, this is Robert Murdoch, Go Engineer Technical Support Department with some more SolidWorks tutorials. Today we're going to talk about how to read installation log files. Um, occasionally when our installs fail, it will give us some nonsensical errors and offer us logs to send to support. And um, I'm going to show you how to read those today in case you're interested in debugging it yourself. Um, you're going to get a file that looks kind of like this. It's going to have some numbers on the end of it. I renamed it to example. Uh, these are actual log files uh, that were given to us by a customer. I have carefully um, subtracted out all of the uh, information from these logs. So there's no risk that we're going to be showing anything bad here. Um, inside that log you're going to find these. It'll say summary IM log and then again some numbers. Um, I just renamed it to example. But this is the log that you're looking for. I'll just show what that looks like here. There's an other logs folder and I, we almost never look at this. There is some useful information here uh, but the really useful log is this one. Um, so we're going to close that. I've already extracted it so I've got it right here. Let's open it up and let's take a look at that. So here is our installation log and it is pretty intimidating at first um, but I'll show you how to read them. This reads kind of like a script. It's telling us what the computer is doing one step at a time. You can see it's doing several instructions per minute here per second um, and it just reads like a story. We've got this is our installation log summary says that this is the location of the log the installation manager is running from. This is useful because it tells us if we're running from a DVD or downloaded files. Uh, keep coming down, we got our installer version. And this is good to read through. I don't need to go through every, every detail of this, but it would be good to at least once carefully read each line and try to figure out what it's trying to say. So this this column here, it, this is a uh, tab delimited uh, file here, and so the, the, the columns are a bit off. This is the type column over here, and it says info for most of these. This column will tell us what type of information is being displayed on each row, and uh, it's very useful because we can kind of quickly sort through the problem. So anything that says info, if we're looking for errors, can be ignored generally. Here we have a line that says warning, so that'd be a good thing to read. Warning, installation manager is being run from an unknown type of location. All that means is we're not running from the downloads folder and we're not running from a DVD, so they wants to know where it's being run from. And it tells us where it's being run from right there. Scroll down a little bit further. Whenever I get these logs, the first thing I do is I scroll down until the info column stops saying info and starts saying error the interface between these two sections info and error is common to have some uh, error codes you'll see a four digit error code number it'll be something like 1603 1702 those kinds of things if you see a four digit error code there uh, that's good news because that's something that you can search in Google or in the SolidWorks knowledge base to find the solution. Those numbers are generated by the Windows Installation Manager and uh, are extremely useful for diagnosing the issue. Now I saw an error up here. There we go. Error. So we want to take a look at that. This one says Toolbox is currently in use. So this, this one's pretty cut and dry. Uh, we're going to show you another place that it says this, but um, SolidWorks can't install if someone's using the toolbox. So this log is pretty easy to read. Um, here's some warnings and all it's telling us is that the serial number is being changed. It used to be something, it's changed to something else. You can see that I've blinked out the, the serial number from this one, but it'll have uh, your serial number, what it used to be and what it's becoming. Uh, the big trick to all of this is I'm going to hit Control F on my keyboard to pull up the Find menu, and I'm going to type in Return Value Three and hit Next. And this is uh, this is really the best way to search for errors because Return Value Three is the computer's way of saying uh, that there was an, a failure, something completely quit. So we do that; it gives us Return Value Three. That's great. Now here's one of those four-digit error codes. Unfortunately, the code 1603 is pretty generic and it doesn't really mean anything in particular other than it failed. So we're not going to get a lot of information about that. However, 
we'll see that we can see what the computer was doing up to that point. And in this case, it looks like we are um, looking at DLL files, and then we get to the DLL update browser data, and we can see what it's doing. And here we see right here, database in use. So it's always good to go up two, three, maybe even four lines above the return error to see if there's a uh, intelligible message here. Database in use, and then it points to swbrowser.ldb. That is the um, toolbox uh, browser. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is the toolbox browser. That is your database. So once again, database in use. That explains the error pretty tidily. The last place you might find errors is if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the log. You'll also see the end of the installer dump and there might be another four digit error code. Again, 1603 isn't very descriptive, but we've already found the issue here when we went to our return value three. We'll go up this time. There we go. So we found the error if, uh, if the user who got this log uh, just uh, stops all use of the toolbox, then they'll be fixed. Uh, if you don't know what the message means, again, you can go to the to the knowledge base. Let me close that. I've got a few other logs open. I can show you really quick what their errors look like. I just jumped straight to the return value 3 here. Um, in this one, another DLL error, add DTS firewall rule. Um, again, we can search for that error in the SOLIDWORKS knowledge base. Uh, the bottom of the log just has a 1603. Not terribly useful. And the last one, let's see here. I believe this is it. No, I'm sorry, this isn't it. There we go. And the last one here, this one, again, return value three, another 1603, not terribly useful, but if we go up a little bit, we can see that the problem was with VSTA, or Microsoft Visual Studio. And so in most cases, I would say, um, repair, uninstall, reinstall the uh, Microsoft Visual Studio. So you can see these logs are very useful in diagnosing our issues, if we're careful about it. Um, let me just show you here. If you have a customer portal account on SolidWorks.com and you have a subscription to maintenance, then you have access to the SolidWorks knowledge base. So if you come here, this is your home page after logging in. You can click on knowledge base and you can say, I got error 1722, for example. Hit search and you'll find all kinds of errors, all kinds of um, documents that SolidWorks has made explaining these issues. You just search for one that sounds relevant, maybe give it a try. Uh, unfortunately, not all of these uh, articles are available to people who are customers. Um, so you might have to get in contact with your SolidWorks reseller in order to get further assistance. Uh, but that is how you read the logs and um, it can be quite useful for diagnosing these issues. This has been Robert in the Go Engineer Technical Support Department. Have a nice day.